Hey, it's Jesse. So I got a comment on one of my videos about how to simulate a Veractor. And I made a quick circuit here. Um, I didn't actually know much about Veractors. I've never used one. But apparently the idea is you take a FET and, well, they're a special type of FET that are optimized for this type of uh, effect. But you connect the source and the drain together and then you put a voltage on the gate and you can get a variable capacitance. You're varying the gate capacitance based on the voltage that's on the gate. So I guess it's kind of like a voltage controlled capacitor. So what I've set up here is just a quick way that I might try and explore this with some spice models that already exist. I'm not sure how this effect is really built into the spice models. If it'll work, I tried it with a breakout part and it didn't do anything um, the, from the breakout library, just the breakout FET. So then I tried with this FET here that was from this random, um, I think, NEC MOS library. And it did a little bit of something. And I put next to it here this uh, C1 capacitor to compare so we can measure this and we can measure this and make sure that we're measuring the capacitance here. And so I was thinking as far as doing this, um, inject here, we can put a bias voltage on it, which should um, adjust the capacitance of the gate if it's working. And then this AC voltage will run an AC analysis and we'll look at the uh, frequency response and use that to calculate the capacitance. So I've already kind of set this up. I'll show you what I've got for results and then I'll update it a little bit here. So this is the simulation profile. It's set to an AC sweep. And here I have a parametric sweep. So this is sweeping the source V1 here in the voltage source from minus 20 to plus 20 volts in increments of five volts. So to start off, you probably wanna just um, deselect this and just run one case. Um, just to make sure that it works. And then you can do the parametric sweep. This over here, the general settings, I've got a log AC sweep from 10 hertz to one megahertz with 50 points per decade. So when we run that, then this is the output here. So I've kind of got it all set up already, but what you do is you go plot, Add plot to window and do that a couple times so that'll give these uh, three plots here in one window. And then you press the insert button, select one plot, and press the insert button on your keyboard. Um, that lets you enter your formula. So this one here is uh, just the impedance for both of these. So impedance is the voltage divided by the current. So in this case, because of the polarity, it's doing minus I of C1. And then here it's doing I of M1 gate. So that's the volt, the uh, current here and the current here. And these labels here, note that I added them by pressing the um, in key for net and then you can write a label and then you can click on the net to set that net name. So here we have V gate over I of M1G. So that's the impedance of the capacitance of the gate of the transistor. And this is the capacitance of the capacitor. So you can see this is just a straight line right here. And then if you want to calculate what that capacitance actually is, first you can calculate the impedance at a specific point. So this here, you want to activate the measurements by going view measurement results. That'll bring this up and then you can put formulas in here. And this formula is just saying Y at X. So it's just going to get one of these data points here. And then I'm saying 1000. So this is basically just going to get the impedance value here at uh, one kilohertz. So it's just picking out this number right here. 
because of this 1000. So this other formula here does the exact same thing, except it does it at 100 kilohertz, 100,000. The next thing is to calculate the capacitance. So if you'll remember, the impedance of a capacitor is 1 over j omega c. And what you can do is you can swap the c with the impedance. So you can calculate c equals 1 over j omega impedance. And that's what this is here. So omega, the j omega is 2 pi f. So we have 1 over 2 pi times, in this case, 1000, and then the impedance at 1000. So we're matching here. The f is corresponding to the impedance at that frequency. So you can use, you know, 100,000 or uh, in both of these cases as well, or a different frequency. And you see that gives us one micro. And that is correct, because we have C1 is one micro. So next, we'll do that same thing, but with the gate capacitance. And we get here 2.95 nano. So next, we want to plot that up here. And to plot that, we've just got the same formula here from down here, copied and pasted. But I'll show you how to get this plot here. So if we delete this plot, plot, uh, delete plot, you can do trace performance analysis. And this comes up here. And in this case, we can just leave this all default. So you have these different sections. And this is going to kind of um, rearrange the X and Y data. So if I click OK now, this creates this second plot up here that has on this axis, instead of frequency, it's the sweep voltage. So now we can do insert and paste this formula here for the capacitance, and it'll plot capacitance over the sweep voltage. And you can see it's kind of fixed up here at the negative part, and then once it starts getting positive, then the capacitance decreases as the voltage increases. So Meet Cert, who posted the comment about the Veractor question, sent me a model that he was working with to use for the transistor. So I'm going to put that in here now and try it out. So I'm going to hit T at T spice, control enter, and I'm going to paste this P spice code that he emailed me in here. So this is the model, and now this will be injected because of this at P spice command. And now we can call this model, which is lb401 slash fp. So I'll grab that out of here. And then I can change this implementation to be this model instead. Change the value to just so it looks nice. And now if we save that, see if it runs. All right, so it ran and it looks totally flat. I guess the first thing to notice is the scale here is pretty crazy. It's two micros. And this really should be picos. So I don't know why the auto range is not working very well. Let's try like zero to a hundred pico here. Let's see. So now we can see that it's flat at around this number here, 84.9 picofarads. So it looks like it's not really changing with the voltage sweeping from negative 20 to 20. So I think this model is not really taking this effect into account. Last thing we can double check that the model was entered correctly. So notice that this one is LB410 with a name here and then it says 201030 but it has here in comments DGS. So they're listed in that order. If we look in this part, the P spice template here is DGS and then the model. So it is using drain gate and source correctly, it looks like. 
And it looks like the model named its pins DG and S. So we should be able to hover over here. And we can see M1 slash S, M1 slash G. Yeah, so these are named correctly and they're lining up with the model. So it looks like everything's working. It's just not demonstrating the effect. So I think I'm just going to have to leave it here for now and we can continue the discussion in the comments uh, if anyone has any ideas for better models or way to model a Veractor. Uh, we can figure it out. Maybe if get some better ideas, I'll make another video on it in the future. Thanks for watching.